Hello friends and welcome back for another Facebook video with Nick and I'm Taylor and we are headed into our last aquarium after dark of October. Don't worry, it's not the last one, not our last theme night, but the last one in October and given its proximity to Halloween, we decided we should do something a little bit spooky. Don't worry, Nick, not too spooky. Tone it down, okay. Now, speaking of our haunted aquarium theme, don't forget to wear your Halloween costumes tonight. As you can see, Nick and I are already in ours. We're ready to go. And I have seen some of our other staff in their costumes as well. So don't forget to bring yours tonight so you can fit right in with the rest of the crew and show off your stuff. Now, given our theme tonight, we also decided that maybe we should do a video about scary animals of the ocean. But as Nick and I talked this through a little bit, we started to realize that there are far more animals in the ocean with scary reputations that are often misunderstood. So misunderstood meanies, that is the theme of our presentation today. And Nick is going to start us off. That's right, Taylor. <laughs> We're going to start off with a fan favorite, a very recognizable animal, one that is often portrayed as the villain in movies and TV shows. That would be the shark. But are sharks really all that scary? Well, sharp pointed teeth, hmm. the ability to sense blood in the water up to a quarter mile away, hmm. incredible speed, apex predators. Hmm. I mean, what's not to be scared about as it relates to sharks, right? I mean. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so sharks really have that reputation as being scary animals. Uh, but there, there's really not that much of a reason to be scared about sharks. Did you know that you're actually more likely to be struck by lightning than you are to be bitten by a shark, Taylor? What? Yeah, that's true. 80%, about 80% of all shark species are actually only four feet long or less. And they feed on things like crabs, shrimp, sea worms, and other small fish. Huh. So we are not on the menu for these animals. Uh, and as long as we don't go swimming in the ocean <laughs> looking like a sea turtle or a seal. I don't think there's any, any chance of that today, Nick. Yeah, definitely not looking <laughs> like this. At dawn or dusk when these animals might be hunting, we are relatively sh safe from any sharks. Yeah. Great news. Okay. Good to hear. So good start there. Awesome. Well, technically this next animal does not live in the ocean. It is a freshwater fish that you can find in the Amazon. But we hear so many of our visitors talking about the ferocious reputation of this specific creature that we had to include it on the list today. And of course, I am talking about our red belly piranhas, which do find their home in the Amazon River. Now, I'm gonna maybe put a little bit of the blame on uh, 1960s and 70s spy movies, right? There's always that villain with the secret lair and he's got his a tank full of man-eating piranhas ready to use their razor-sharp teeth to dispose of his foes. Well, that's not exactly the truth. Uh, so that really aggressive feeding behavior that we associate with piranhas only happens during the dry season in the Amazon when space and food are really scarce. In fact, piranhas hang out in groups together for the same reason that other schooling fish hang out in groups together, and that is that they feel safer in numbers. So in fact, turns out piranhas are kind of big scaredy cats. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. Another <laughs> uh, mistaken uh, reputation for these animals, huh? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm detecting a pointed teeth theme with some <laughs> of these animals because the next animal we're going to talk about is the green moray eel. And our green moray eels live in our giant ocean tank. Their names are Thomas and Jocelyn. When you visit us, hopefully you'll get a chance to see them moving around. Um, and not only do moray eels have one set of sharp teeth, but they actually have two sets what? of sharp teeth inside their mouth. But do not be worried. Again, humans are not on the menu for animals like green moray eels. If you do get a chance to see them swimming around in our giant ocean tank, however, you might get a chance to see some of their teeth. 
Definitely you'll see that first layer of pointed teeth that sort of point inwards towards the inside of your mouth. They also have a second row of teeth inside of their throat that extend out to help them secure their prey. But again, like I was saying, we are not on the menu for animals like green moray eels. If you do see one in our tank, if you encounter one in the wild and you manage to see those pearly whites, <laughs> it is most likely because moray eels are breathing. What? They're opening their mouth, taking in water, and closing their mouth to push it out through their gills. That's how they breathe, and that's referred to as buccal pumping. So it might appear mm -hmm. like you have something to be concerned of by seeing those teeth, but you do not. That is not the case. Excellent news. Yeah. All right. Another misconception cleared up. Thanks for that one, Nick. And that I think brings us to our last frightening fishy friend this afternoon. And that will be our puffer fish. Whoa. Yeah. So puffer fish look pretty terrifying, um, but are they really all that scary? Well, if they are threatened, they can puff their bodies up to two to three times its original size, and they're covered in spines, which hopefully deters predators from taking a bite. And a lot of people will see those spines and think that makes them exceptionally dangerous. And while there are Certainly plenty of spiny fish in the ocean that you do want to avoid if you think about lionfish or stonefish or scorpionfish. But puffer fish are not venomous fish. They are poisonous, but they are not venomous. So as long as you don't eat them, you should be just fine. How about that? Phew. Another myth dispelled. Perfect. Well, I think that brings us to the end of our list of uh, misunderstood fish. We could probably go on and on for quite some time. There are lots of animals in the ocean that do have bad reputations and are not at all as scary as they seem. But I think Nick is going to wrap it up for us today. That's right. And if you guys do have any questions, well, we typically answer questions live during these presentations. We're just going to ask you to add those questions to the comments section of our Facebook page, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. If you're planning on coming tonight to our aquarium after dark spooky hours, <laughs> we can't wait to see you ghouls and goblin fish. So don't forget to wear those costumes. If not, we hope you have a healthy and safe Halloween. Either way, we hope you enjoyed learning about how some of those myths about scary animals in the ocean are actually just myths and not truths. And we hope that you tune in for more fun facts and more virtual content from us here at the aquarium. Happy Halloween, everyone. Bye, friends. <laughs>